Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. A little bit ago, I shot a video about cheap fragrances and why cheap fragrances are awesome. I showed you cheap fragrances that prove cheap fragrances don't suck. They're totally worth the money. Well, today I'm doing a video where we're talking about cheap fragrances again, but we're, we're going over ones that prove cheap fragrances do suck. So yeah, we're doing the inverse here. We've stepped into bizarro world little Berenstein Bears, Berenstain Bears type thing going on. So uh, let's jump into it. Let's go over some cheap fragrances that prove you get what you pay for, and if you don't pay much, you get trash. Let's start off with some that are a little fresher in the old noggin here in the brain. And I'll link these in the description too, in case you want to check them out. Uh, first one is Tag Helm Pour Ohm, of course, from the house of Armoff, which pretty much all of you out there know. And I'd say a lot of you out there know this fragrance, probably more so than almost everything else we're gonna talk about here today, if not more than absolutely everything we're gonna talk about. So Armoff, of course, is a clone house. They're most well known for Club de Nuit Intense Man, which is an Aventus clone, uh, Tag Helm is also a clone. What is it a clone of? Well, of Bleu de Chanel. And I gotta say, it's a crappy clone. <laughs> it's not good at all. This is one of my least favorite Armoff fragrances which is unfortunate because it's also one of the first ones I bought. And uh, even right from the get-go, there were red flags all over the place with this one. The little tag here is rusted around the edges, and it was like that when I got it, brand new. So if you're buying a fragrance, and the first thing you notice is the little cheap tag that they put on it to try to make it fit in with the name is rusted, not great, yeah. It also has a magnetic cap. I love magnetic caps, but this one, Oh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's got the weakest magnet of all time. It's just uh, pathetic. None of this would matter though, if the fragrance was good. This was a great alternative to Blue de Chanel, then who cares about a little rust? Who cares about the cheapest magnetic cap of all time? Dang it, I got it. We're good. So how does it smell? Uh, not good. It smells like the cheapest version you could ever imagine of Blue de Chanel. Blue de Chanel removed uh, of anything that gives it interest, intrigue, depth, or quality. I've spent too much time talking. Let's keep it moving. Nautica Oceans. This stuff is absolutely atrocious. Now there was an older fragrance called Nautica Oceans. They resurrected the name, not the same fragrance. It's a new fragrance, just using the old name in a new bottle. And the whole idea with this one was, it's a fragrance good for the environment. So they were like, oh, our box uses like uh, water-based ink and there's no perfumer's alcohol in here. It's just water-based and it's used from recycled ingredients. It's so good for your environment. And uh, what happens? Well, it smells like not much. You spray it on and it's the most bland, generic, kind of aquatic clean scent and then it's gone like 15 minutes later and because this is one of those super cool water-based fragrances uh, which they just haven't quite nailed down how to do that yet uh, when you spray it on your skin it just leaves like a, a sticky patch so like if you spray it in the crook of your elbow and you do this it'll be like yeah it's uh, not good next up uh, nissan patrol for everybody out there who is about that Nissan Patrol life so much that they were like, man, <laughs> I would kill for a Nissan Patrol fragrance while I'm riding around in my patrol. Yes, yes, fantastic. You hit me with a brand like Bentley, Mercedes Benz, Ferrari. Makes sense, right? There's that cachet behind the brand where you see somebody in a car, one of those cars, and you go, ooh, that person's got it going on. They've got a lot of money. If it's a nicely appointed one that's not like, you know, clapped out. Nissan, no offense, uh, for the most part, doesn't have that same level of cachet. And unfortunately, Nissan decided to carry that over into both the presentation and the fragrance. It smells like inexpensive, chemically hairspray sweetened up with bubble gum. It smells like it's gonna cause lung cancer. Yeah, let's keep moving. Taxi Blue, you don't need to say a lot. When you see a cap like this, 
Whew. And an atomizer like that, you're in for a bad time. Now, to be fair, this is crazy cheap and I got it from Amazon. And one thing that I do kind of dig about it is it's like checker pattern, checkerboard pattern. It smells like a very inexpensive lavender soap and not much else. The type of fragrance that's gonna last again, 15, 20 minutes and then it's gone. And it didn't even smell like it was uh, worth wearing to begin with. Frozen by Police. This one also horrific with the cap. Just one of those deals sometimes when you look at a, a fragrance, I mean, this isn't always the case, but when you look at a fragrance and the cap is just like the worst, ugliest thing that you've ever seen that weighs absolutely nothing, it just wouldn't even register. But this is like less than a gram. When you see something like that, they put that level of attention into the cap. And also the atomizer on this is really bad too. Check it out. A very weak puff. This one is slightly more appealing in a way over the Nissan and Taxi Blue. Actually, out of everything so far, I'd probably wear this. It does have a little bit of an iciness to it off the top. The main issue though with it is that it does come across so, so cheap. Uh, next up, For Him by Raw Chemistry. What is Raw Chemistry? Uh, you don't know? You don't know what Raw Chemistry is? Where you been? It's pheromone cologne. That's right. Ah, pheromone cologne. Yeah, so uh, essentially the whole gist of this fragrance here, and it's not the only one. You go to Amazon, there's a whole mess load of pheromone colognes at this point, but I digress. The whole point, the whole idea of this, of raw chemistry, is that you spray it on and it has human grade pheromones inside of it, human grade pheromones. And what those will do is they're gonna make the ladies get weak in the knees. It's gonna make all the women, only the attractive ones, all those women around you are gonna drop what they're doing. Just gonna be like, what is that? And they're gonna go full lizard brain, right? Everything shuts down and they just see you yeah, like outlined, you know, as if you're some Greek god, just a, an aura about you, which is your raw chemistry, of course. And then they come up to you and they're basically just like, take me home immediately. And then they start fighting each other because they, you know, they want to get with you because of this. Now, I hate to break it to you. That is not going to happen. And I know there are people out there who will try to convince themselves, no man, pheromones are the real deal. I spray on the pheromone cologne and all of a sudden all the ladies coming after me. It doesn't work, dude. It doesn't work. Be realistic. So we remove the pheromone mumbo jumbo bull crap from this. And what are you left with? You're left with a fragrance that when you spray it on, first off, it's not very strong. Once again, I know. They say it's all natural and silk based, but um, <laughs> yeah, it just smells like, I don't know, a weak version of Curve or something? Yeah, no thanks. Up next, Venom. Yeah. There are a bunch of these fragrances. I'm sure you've seen them, whether online or in TJ Maxx or Ross's superhero fragrances, you know, Captain America, Spider-Man, Iron Man, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, this one, Venom. So what's the deal? Well, I mean, licensing and also appealing to children, and maybe collectors of like superhero stuff. The fragrance itself smells like not much. Frankly, just I hit this with probably five, six sprays. And it, I mean, there's not really anything coming off here. A very slight kind of lavender, fresh spice thing. They put absolutely no effort into the fragrance at all. I mean, literally no effort, period. Desire Fragrances, Inc., New York. You're doing a bad job. So what's inside here smells of little to nothing. You can spray it on yourself 50 times. Nobody's going to pick it up. Does it smell like venom would smell? No. Is it even a dark fragrance? No. Don't even give this to your kid. Like if you're trying to get them into fragrances and smelling good, and you're trying to do that by giving them a superhero type fragrance because you think, well, they like superheroes. So, you know, that will get them into it. No, it's going to make them hate fragrances because they're going to smell this and be like, this sucks. This is trash. Why would I ever wear this? I don't even I'm not interested. OK, Carl Lagerfeld up next. Big old Carl. To be fair, the only reason I got this was a video that I did where I was talking about some of the lowest rated fragrances, smelling some of them. And this was one of them. And it's certainly not good. 
but in comparison to the other things up here, it may be the best thing here. Somewhat powdery. It has lavender, a little fruity sweetness and some woods in the uh, dry down. And yeah, a lot of these, these uh, generic fragrances, apparently they just go for a easy lavender, like a cheap lavender, and then they go, we're done. It's not good, this one. It's the pinnacle of generic. It's extremely forgettable, but better than most of the other things. It's not saying much. Then we've got a Davidoff Champion. Look at this, looks like a little dumbbell. So you can pretend you're working out. And maybe you bring it uh, to your, your gym, throw it in your gym bag. That way after you're done lifting weights, you pull this out of the gym bag and you're like, see what I got guys. Yeah, that's my fragrance. Davidoff Champion, wear this and you too can smell like the Liver King. Awesome. Now, whereas Karl Lagerfeld for him is just painfully generic, uh, Davidoff Champion is just poorly done. It has citrus, has clary, sage, oak moss. I mean, it's a very uninspired, no breakdown, but that's fine. If you pull it off well, then who cares? But this one comes across a bit astringent. It's got kind of a harsh grating citrus instead of being like fresh, sweet, uplifting, juicy, any of that. No, just sharp. And as I said, astringent chemically. And then it has this earthy oak moss that comes out in the dry down, uh, which really does not sit well with that opening. It's pretty harsh. Last fragrance, Guess Dare for him. Now this one, when I very first got it, if memory serves, I thought the opening wasn't too terrible. It's like, ah, oh, that's not that bad. I mean, for a really cheap scent, could be worse. Kind of like a peppery juniper with like an underlying kind of I don't know, hard to describe woodiness, like an underlying, yeah, I don't know, an underlying something. But it was okay, the opening. Uh, and then as it dries down, man, it just falls apart, really does. It's like they didn't quite give the perfumer enough budget to really cohesively make a fragrance there. So they got the opening part of the way done to the point where you're like, what? It's a little interesting for something cheap. And then it just, whoa. It's like uh, paying somebody to do a tree house or something. And you look at it from really far away. And you're like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. And then you start to uh, walk up, you know, the steps or the climb the ladder up to the, the tree house. And as soon as you step foot in it, you know, all the sides and everything start falling off. And then the roof is caving in and the boards are falling away. And you're like, oh my God. And you just, fall to your death. That's essentially this. The longer it stays on your skin, the worse it gets. Uh, technically in the dry down, I think it's like woods, musk, and some florals, but man, it's just ugh, chemical mess, chemical soup. So there we go, 10 cheap fragrances uh, that prove you get what you pay for. You're not gonna pony up some cash. Be prepared to be disappointed. Of course, uh, it's not true. It's dependent on the fragrance. There are some cheap fragrances, as I've said a million times, that are great, but then there are some that really suck. So don't just blindly add stuff into your cart because it's cheap. Do some research first. I'm out of here. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.